Hello and welcome as we do a quick tour of the Altes Pro 31, uh, sorry, 6.31 um, online software as well as the upload software. And in this case, uh, we're going to start right from the beginning with a 30 horsepower 1765 RPM motor. Now, the first thing you want to do, because we have several readings uploading, is we are going to want to set this machine up um, so that we upload, we don't have to uh, add a lot of header data. So what we're going to do is create a file name in here called, uh, we'll just call it nameplate. Okay, click OK. Yes, we do. And then when we highlight this, you notice that the header file has popped up as well as uh, some other information here. But we're going to start here with this. And what we're going to do is it is an induction motor, three phases, acquired three phases, uh, analyze uh, current and voltage. Um, in this case, the machine is operating on a dyno. So we're just going to say no driven equipment. Um, the power value is 30 horsepower. It is a 1765 RPM machine. It is 460 volts. The full load current is 34.5 amps. Most of the time you don't know the no load current in some machines uh, will see this. But uh, we know from operating that we saw it under no load at uh, 8 amps. Now, rotor bars and stator slots are critical to what we're going to do. So let me go over here, and the first thing we're going to do is select totally enclosed fan cooled. It is an energy efficient motor operating at 60 hertz. Um, it is an induction motor. Uh, if we were operating on a VFD, we would select this. In this case, though, it is an induction machine. Now to find the rotor bars and stator slots, I can go to the um, motor database. And in here, I can look for, this is a GE motor. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and just leave that the way it is. We hit enter. And now you can see we have all of this information here. So let's now add in 460 volts and enter again. Now I know it's a, um, uh, whoops, let's go ahead and then enter in as well the uh, horsepower, which is 30. Now we've got 30 horsepower motors. This is a uh, 286T frame. So if we scroll down to 286T frame, then we will find a number of machines, all different uh, model numbers and everything else. But the main thing I notice is all of these have 40 and 48. So we're going to go ahead and um, say that this is 40 and 48. So let's get out of here. We're going to say 40 rotor bars and 48 stator slots. Now we have this information. There's all kinds of other information we can add up here. Um, plant information and so on. We are going to not do that at the moment uh, for the demonstration, but we can enter that in. Any comments, a picture of the motor we can put in here as well. Uh, let's go ahead and find the bearing though. So we go into the bearing database. Um, the drive end is an SKF 30, uh, 6311 and the ops drive end is an SKF 6310. So let's find our SKF bearings. There's the SKF bearings. And now here we're going to scroll down to the 600 series. So 63.11 for this one. Notice all the multipliers have come up. And this one will be a 63.10. We'll select OK. So now we have all of this information in our nameplate, which the then want to save as default. 
click OK. So now anything that comes into this um, will be set up for that. Now we've collected the data. We've covered two sets of data uh, on the machine. So let's go ahead and we're going to close out of here for now. And let's upload the data from a memory stick. Now we can do this either by connecting the instrument via Bluetooth or via a memory card. So let's go ahead and select this. The SD card is here. And we work our way down to the dates that it was selected. You notice MT and WF. MT is the motor testing uh, waveforms and WF is the power quality waveforms. We're going to take a quick look at both of these. So I have my uh, data set up to come into uh, that folder that we have set up. So receive only. Our three sets of data have come in. There's our header, default header, all set up. And uh, we're going to go ahead and close this now. Now, some of the things we can do from here is take a look at um, some of the information taken while we were taking our data. So let's go ahead into our test data area. And we have data log and stored waveform. So let's go ahead and take a look at the waveform. Um, this would be unloaded, 50% load, and full load on this particular machine. We're going to take a look at our voltage and current, the three phases, and let's go ahead and view it. Now here are three phases of power uh, on top of each other so we can take a look. You notice that uh, I've got both my voltage and my current in here. Uh, this is the current on this side, and this is the voltage on this side. You can see the voltage looks a little dirty. Um, the other thing we can do while we're in here is take a look as well at the phaser diagram to make sure everything's nice and balanced, uh, as well as a few other things we can look at, such as uh, harmonics. Okay, so here's our power harmonics in both voltage and current. Um, so they've got a slight fifth and seventh, even though this is not on an inverter. Um, in any case, uh, that uh, we've got quite a bit of other information we can do. Um, and uh, but for the purposes of this presentation, this would be it uh, for what we plan. Okay, this would be other kinds of data that could be taken separately with the instrument. Uh, again, the same thing. As a matter of fact, the instrument that is used is a power analyzer. So we have this data up now. We are going to, uh, we'll cover more on this in a separate video. Let's take a look at the data that we did collect. So if I open up my data, I come in and you notice now it's opened these up. There's a large group of files associated with each one. You notice that they're date and time stamped. So let's go ahead and open up this first one. This should be no load condition. Here we go. So I've got a no load condition here. And uh, let's take a closer look at this information here. So full FFT data. Okay, and we are looking at certain conditions. Nameplate information has updated automatically, so I don't have to worry about that. And I can come in now and click this button, and it will do me a quick analysis. Now, it says the load is a little low, um, so it cannot calculate uh, certain things such as my efficiency and so on. But in here, I can take a look at the current, including the power factor, the real power, this is the power of the shaft, the reactive power, uh, this is the power to uh, energize the fields, the apparent power, and then also my voltage and current. Uh, I can switch this over to horsepower if it's easier to understand that. That's pretty straightforward. The next thing I can do is take a look at my line frequency, what it's calculated as my running speed, pull pass frequency, and my harmonic distortion in current and voltage. Bearings, uh, it shows everything's okay. Phasers, this would be my power quality uh, for harmonics. 
okay, as well as I could take a look at the amplitude here. Graphs are far better. Results, um, this is what it has detected automatically. And then extras um, include all, all the information that we we're looking at, uh, including the rotor bar health and so on. Um, the any type of cursors related to static dynamic eccentricity and stator mechanical calculated by the machine. And we can also take a look at my torque ripple. Now this is a new piece that comes with uh, version 6.31 and it is extremely powerful. Um, so we will uh, now go ahead and um, get out of this. So let me just have that do there. There we go. So it's selected a running speed and the line frequency. There's some little peaks here that which are kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and take a look also at the high frequency data. This is going to show me what my waveforms look like in voltage and current. And if I zoom in, will also show me my higher frequency data that I can now analyze. And because I have all that information, I can have it show me power harmonics first. So anything above this in an induction motor, I'm not going to pay a lot of attention to. Static eccentricity, which it definitely has some. Dynamic eccentricity, which it does not. Any type of stator mechanical, which it appears it does have some. And any type of bearing related frequencies, which we can take a look up here or uh, go in the other uh, data. So let's focus in. And um, it's possible, however, those fall right on some line frequency peak. So chances are this is not um, that. We do know that one bar has been milled out on these. So what we can do next here, let's go back to our low frequency data and let's take a look at something else that's a feature in this particular software. And this will allow us, especially in variable speed, variable torque, and VFD applications um, to look at uh, a couple of additional things. So let's go ahead and get into just this spectrum here. So I can come in now and I can do a few things such as a waterfall plot and take a look at amplitude, frequency, and time. I have a little de delay here due to the um, recording uh, software, but uh, please pardon that. So this is amplitude, frequency, and time. Uh, other things I can do, I can compare any two readings. I can also come in here, turn things back on. So there's my current. Uh, here's my voltage in order to take a look at um, my voltage and frequency uh, in the different channels that were collected. So here we go. Um, this would be voltage. This would be current. Um, this would be the voltage spectrum, current spectrum, and DMOD. Oh, DMOD and DMOD. So voltage and current, both DMOD. So uh, there we go for that. Let's go ahead and take a look at a second one. Again, when we open this up, we're going to see that we have at 50% load, I have all my name played in here. Um, I can take a look at that spectrum. This is at 50% load. You notice some additional peaks. So at 50% load, I can now look in here and let's see what, uh, what we find. Okay, here we go. This is where I was before, so this will pop this up first. This is my torque reading. It's all that other information we talked about. It says rotor bar health is questionable. Yes, because I have definite pull pass frequency sidebands. Uh, there's my harmonics. Bearings are still okay. 
here's the operating frequencies, including the calculated pull pass frequency, and there we are with a running current of about 17 amps. It has calculated my motor load at 45.2%. It has calculated the efficiency at this point at 90.5%. It's also providing me with um, specific information. So finally, let's take a look at that last reading. This is under near full load conditions, about 30 amps. We do know this machine has a broken rotor bar. It's actually been milled out. Okay, again, all of our nameplate information is here, including the bearing information uh, as we uh, wanted. And let's go ahead and take a look and see what it has to say for us. Now, as we go through this, um, I never rely fully on software. I'll go through and confirm all of this information. So we are looking at a 90% load, 91.4% efficiency, which was found by the Department of Energy to be relatively close within a half to 1% of the actual efficiency um, in this particular software. Here's all my loads and my current. This is a 34 amp machine, 34.5 amp machine, so I am very near full load. Frequencies again, bearings all okay, phasers again, results, static eccentricity as well, and then finally any type of torque related issues, and I don't see much there. Okay, so there's our pull pass frequency peaks. Uh, there's our running speed, which is uh, 1768 RPM. It is 1765 RPM motor. That is about what's expected. Line frequency is really close to 60 hertz. So with this, I hope you've enjoyed your quick tour. Um, let's take a look at the high frequency data real quick. I want to see that static eccentricity. Again, we're zooming in. Let's get rid of this noise. And let's take a look. Static eccentricity cursors are very definite. Dynamic eccentricity, not there. Stator mechanical, it looks like there might be something. And uh, we had already seen the bearing. Uh, conditions. So with this, I hope you've enjoyed your tour. If you have any questions, please contact uh, us at sales at motordoc.com for information on the all test uh, system, demonstrations, and also quotations. Thank you very much.